Hello, 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 everyone. Dr. Darian Parker here again. Dr. D's Social Network Podcast and back again on a solo cast. Uh, love doing these solo casts, especially with the focus on fitness, health, and wellness. And uh, we're going to talk about three different things today, today but uh, the big thing is I want to talk about, and I've been really like want to be intentional, and but also be organic in the things that I talk about within our industry that I feel like have a, a deep connection to a lot of people in our business and our enthusiasts who are in, um, very into exercise, physical activity and movement. And maybe you guys have seen recently uh, an article um, that featured the actor Rosamund Pike. I'm gonna share my screen here with you guys about this article here. And in the article, um, Rosamund is asked about uh, the wellness industry. And it's pretty interesting. Uh, I want to read to you guys what she says. Um, so, you know, take, here's what it talks about. The script includes satirical mentions of Gwyneth Paltrow's goop. So I mean, it's about the movie she's into. Do you have much truck with wellness? And quote, uh, what Rosamund says, I think we're all being conned by the wellness industry. This idea that it's no longer enough to be healthy and we have to be well, in quotations, is something that needs to be interrogated. Yet it's so seductive because it's in pursuit of things that people are ashamed to want, like youth, beauty, and fitness. Rosamund then goes on, uh, continue to be quoted to say that the Me Too movement gave women an opportunity to escape some of the demands put on them. Now, in a way, people are voluntarily flocking back to being controlled, but in a different guise by these wellness claims. It's politicized our food, politicized our exercise, and I think it's really dangerous, end quote there. So I thought it'd be interesting to discuss uh, what Rosamund Pike said about this because I think it's really interesting. And I would love to hear from you guys about it. All of my colleagues, do you think wellness is a con, uh, an industrial complex, if you will? We've been throwing these things around there quite a bit. Uh, but I tend to think that it's really the same as it's always been. I mean, we've been a business, a larger business of fitness, health, and wellness that has been pretty f much full of quackery and full of shit for a really long time. And I can remember growing up in those late night infomercials, you guys remember those things where it was just ad after ad of really bogus stuff. Um, and, you know, everybody's trying to get a piece of the pie. They're trying to get something to move ahead. They kind of create something for themselves uh, to create wealth. I mean, I mean, literally a lot of what happens in our society on these large scale things and whether it's wellness, beauty, fitness, whether it's financial scams or people trying to get wealthy, move ahead, and uh, largely people who present lots of narcissism within these um, avenues for that. Um, listen, I don't really know what's going on with Goop and stuff. I don't pay that much attention to it. I have heard about it. I know there's a Netflix special related to it, and there may be some interesting products that are sold there. And so I really can't speak too deeply about Gwyneth Paltrow's aspect of it. Whatever she's into, that's her thing. Um, but what I do think is the wellness industry in general, um, it's just another opportunity for con artists and people. And like in any industry, there are people who get into it and they take advantage of a market. And it just seems that uh, our industry in fitness, health and wellness is an easy target for that because it preys upon people's extreme desires to want to change themselves, to be in better condition, to, to feel better, to be more beautiful, um, to, to have different qualities that makes them feel like they're more than who they are uh, for it. So we're in our bodies on a regular basis and we're being inundated with different information about our bodies, about our mind, about our spirit, all these things. So I just think it's an easy target. It's easy to pull people in because the desire is so high to be to have a better life and to get out of the current reality that we're in for that. So is wellness a con? I mean, it can be. Um, for a lot of people, it's not. But uh, for individuals who are good at uh, targeting certain people and different groups of people, it can certainly be a con. And I think the more important thing is that to be aware that 
um, we need to be more aware of what a con is. And I think we're getting better at that because, I mean, listen, there are more documentaries, series, specials, information out there that are highlighting or bringing to light con artists in all different fields. And that these are the signs and symptoms of that. Just like in cults, I've done a lot of interviews with people who have survived being in cults, did a big special for the lust of God, a five-part series with that, with survivors of a sex cult. And doing this information, this research, this kind of investigative journalism-based work through a podcast, you get to learn a lot about how people get involved in these things, who are the main players in it. And it's no different really in wellness. I mean, there are a lot of people who are, are doing these things, whether it's the wellness aspect of fashion. And we saw with documentaries about Lula Rowe. Now we're seeing with uh, other things related to that. Um, uh, recently, I think the lady turned herself in for the alleged crimes um, in the One Taste, which was considered a cult. Um, and so that's going through the legal process, you know, the, the cult of wellness for sexuality, right? But that could be any part of wellness with that. There's a cult of fitness too. I mean, anything that is extreme has a very high potential of exhibiting cult-like behaviors. So in my next segment here, I want to talk about that and the extremist nature of our business, but also how that relates to society. So extremism is not just something we're experiencing in the political hemisphere um, and realm today. I know that it gets a lot of attention in our media uh, with that. And listen, we're paying attention to things that are happening in our country. Um, but what I think is very interesting is that this extremism on whatever version or side that you may find yourself on or decide to be on is relatable to all different aspects of life. So I mentioned before that uh, fitness can be a cult. And, th and there's certainly elements of that uh, where people exhibit very extreme behaviors, extreme allegiance, kind of a uniform based mentality, no openness to different ideas, um, and very isolated mentality. Certainly that could happen in fitness. And I, I could argue that it has happened in different areas of that. And that in, in fitness, we create a lot of mini cults within that. They may not be um, ones where there's violence to things that that's hap happening and, and aggression, but there are certainly aspects of our business that lend itself to uh, a cult-like behavior and environments for that. And so I, I think it's important that we are uh, really careful about those things. I mean, I've talked to several people like I had a big month about yoga and yoga is definitely on that block with that. I mean, these charismatic leaders sometimes who become yoga gurus and I have a whole issue with the word guru. I think it's, uh, we need to move away from it. I honestly do. Um, you know, the person who rises up becomes a charismatic leader, then starts controlling a lot of the followers and isolates the information, their access to different things. Um, and then you create kind of a hive mind mentality. Uh, these things are very basic understandings of cults and you know, all of your uh, researchers who study cults will tell you these things. And uh, But it's often very difficult to know that you're in a cult until it's too late for that. So whether it's a fitness-based thing, wellness-based thing, the, the, the con of it all, I think the hardest part is recognizing and asking yourself, Am I getting involved in something that has the potential to be part of that? That's called critical thinking, right? It's something that um, I think is a very difficult concept at this point. We're losing a lot of our critical thinkings. We're not spending the time looking at different aspects of those things. So how do we uh, avoid extremism in our business? And then also relating that to anything else, whether it's politics, whether it's financial things, uh, whatever it may be, one of the biggest things that I could give you for advice for this is to spend time with other people that are different from you. Spend time. I This sounds really obvious, and I know you've heard this before, but it's one thing to hear about it. It's another thing to actually do it. That's another aspect of it. A lot of, I told my daughter the other day, an old school term, right, talk is cheap. 
everybody talks. I'm talking right now, but I'm all about the proof. I am part of that proof. I talk to tons of people every week, every year, 630 plus episodes. I'm talking to people who agree with me, don't agree with me. We have uh, views that are completely opposite, but we have a we have a talk. I'll give you a good example of this. I have an episode coming out on Tuesday, June 20th, with Liz Enton. And Liz is an atheist, and uh, I have been a believer in God and Jesus the majority of my life. And uh, I wanted to have a good conversation with her because she has been researching the afterlife. And through a very science-based lens, according to her, no woo-woo, but we had an incredible conversation because we weren't trying to be confrontational with each other or prove one side wrong or the other. It's just about having a conversation, being civil, being civil in the conversation. And coming together. Honestly, it was wonderful. It was really wonderful. And uh, I, I'm really open to the idea of the concept of the spectrum of possibilities. And if you have a spectrum of possibilities in your life that you could see that there's a lot of different options to your thoughts, that over here, this is a possibility. And over here, this is also a possibility. And not being so concrete in your ideas all the time, you can really gain a lot from that. And you will actually keep yourself from being in, uh, susceptible to more cult-like extremist behavior because you'll actually see that there's lots of different possibilities for that. I had mentioned to uh, Liz, just like I had mentioned to a lot of different people, you know, there's a lot of information now about UFOs, more and more information is coming out about UFOs, government programs, stuff. This is not stuff that's wacky or crazy stuff. These are legitimate people who are coming out talking about this. The Commander David Fravers, the Weir Ryan Graves, Lou Elizondo, um, and the list goes on and on and on of people uh, about this. And so this has become, you know, legitimate, very sane people are talking about this. Oh, if you talk about that, you also have a large group of scientists who only believe that uh, there has to be life in the universe. It, it, we can't be alone. Well, I believe in the spectrum of possibilities that there is a good chance that that could be right. And according to a Drake equation, a statistical aspects of that, there could be billions, uh, millions and billions of civilizations. But there also could just be Earth where there's life. Either way, one of us is going to be right, one of us is going to be wrong. And there's a good chance we'll never know. But I'm open to the idea that both of these things are possible for that. And I'm okay with both ideas. This will keep you from having an extremist mentality because you'll be open-minded about the spectrum of possibilities and not the isolation of your only of your idea being the only thing that matters uh, for that. So in our fitness and wellness business, we have to be open-minded. We have to talk to each other. The certification organizations need to have tight relationships with each other, talk with each other, come to the table, meet with each other. As colleagues, you need to talk to each other, spend time with each other. You know, we have uh, lots of conferences that happen over the summertime in fitness, health, and wellness. Uh, just came from ACSM presenting there. And uh, I will be at IDEA, uh, the IDEA World Convention, uh, July 12th through 16th. If you listen to this, I'd love to meet you, sit down, spend some time with you, just to be human with you, connect. I'm not coming to meet anybody to make myself right or to prove my point. I'm coming just to meet you and to create a relationship. That's it. And we may have very different opinions on things. Who cares? It's primarily about how we treat each other, how we respect each other, those things. And here's the thing. Once you do that with other people, they become real to you. The problem is, is we often make things we're outraged by, we make them not real. We, have, we don't anthropomorphize them. We make them an object. So it's easier to yell at an object and have craziness towards something that you have no connection to. But if you actually sit down with someone, you break bread with them, you see their humanity, it's very different. Daryl Davis does a great job of this, who has done incredible work uh, throughout the decades. Uh, Daryl Davis has spent time going to bars, biker bars, and things where uh, people in the KKK frequent. 
And as a black man, clearly, as he goes into these places, he meets some resistance, but he sits down with them. He has a drink or whatever with them, and he just shows them their humanity. And he has turned a ton of people away from the KKK because of that. Truly incredible. Look him up, Daryl Davis. Such an awesome guy. Um, and I think that's that's a blueprint, right? We sit down with people and we connect with them and we show them our humanity. And you'll see that you have a lot more in common. So fight extremism in our business and fitness and wellness, but also in other parts by being very open-minded. And you're going to find a lot there. All right, last part here. Uh, I'm moving. It's finally time. By the time you hear this podcast, uh, I will have moved already to Colorado, northern Colorado. Looking forward to it. One of the first things I did when I realized I was going to be moving to northern Colorado was I reached out to as many people that were in my LinkedIn that were fitness professionals, enthusiasts in that area <clears throat> to have meetings with them. And happy to say, I have several meetings planned with my colleagues in that area. I've reached out to many of the colleges and universities in that. And uh, also, I'm getting back into teaching in the university environment, which I'm very happy uh, about as well uh, as a complement to my personal training career. Um, so I'm really happy about that. But again, I want to be proof of what I'm actually doing. I'm not just telling you to go out to meet people. I'm telling you, I am meeting people. We're getting out there. We're having the conversations. I have no clue where it's going to lead. I never look for a, a result. I don't plan the outcome. How can you even know what that's going to be? All I do is plan to meet people and be a human being, be a good example of a person, and let those seeds become the beautiful plants that hopefully they will become uh, with that. So uh, head in Northern Colorado, wishing Washington State uh, uh, a good saying goodbye to Washington State. It's been an incredible experience being here. I have a lot of positive things and feelings about Washington State. Uh, funny quick story is when my wife and I were married almost 20 years ago, we had a list of places that we said we would never live. And uh, Washington State was on one of those. You know why? because we had never been there. And all we heard was that it wasn't a great place to live. It was kind of like dark and rainy all the time. And uh, it was far away. I had never been that way. So I made a determination that I would never live in this place. And I did that without knowing literally nothing about the state. And isn't this what happens with us in general is we make determinations on things without literally knowing anything about the thing. So I'm really happy I took some time to live here over five years and learn about this beautiful state, very nice people, and uh, can check that off. And now, um, officially, we have lived in almost literally every single part of the United States. That was also a part of a deal. I'm not saying it's planned, but part of a deal to like really understand the United States. And the best way is to live in as many parts of it, if you can, to really get a good pulse and feel for that. A lot of that happened during my dad's military experience. We lived all over the United States. And then as an adult, I lived uh, all over the West Coast. So uh, Colorado looks to be kind of our final landing place. I just love how beautiful the people are, the outdoor recreation, adventure. I love our new community. And already we have great neighbors. So I'm really excited uh, for that. But uh, we're doomed to have poor attitudes and inaccurate information when we don't seek out things and filter things properly. And so that's uh, that whole story of not wanting to move to Washington was purely based off of not knowing anything about it. And that's literally what happens with most people, I think. I think the most zealous people or the zealotry that happens with people, the most outwardly crazy about things are the people who literally know the least about stuff. I was guilty of that. And I see it so vividly in people when I see them doing interviews and things and they're pushing and yelling and fighting so much. They usually know the least about the thing they're talking about, because once they're pressed beyond the initial argument, they have no actual critical thinking and understanding and actual factual information about the thing they're discussing. Um, and that leads me to my last thing beyond this little bonus part is my wife and I are researching all the presidents of the United States. So I started with George Washington. And uh, my wife is doing John Adams. And then we're just going back and forth all the way through current president. And it's going to be a huge project. 
But I figured besides living in the majority of the United States, the Northeast, Southeast, the Deep South, the Midwest, the Southwest, the uh, the Pacific Northwest, all these places give me a, has given me a very good idea about America. But I also wanted to research America, the founding fathers, and get a really good idea of the birth of this country. So I'm American, just like uh, many of you who are, who are uh, listening to this. Isn't don't you want to actually know about the country you live in? So I always tell people, spend some time in Washington D.C. Uh, I would, my dad was stationed there, there a couple of times and, but I've gone back on my own several times to visit it. Cause I think it's really important. So I'm very grateful for that. And thank you guys for your time. Appreciate it.